When two neurodivergent co-authors, Emily Morrison and Indy Grace, with them, we summarized these and other findings in a chapter published in the Neurobiology of Language and in an article published in the Annual Review of Linguistics. From echolalia and pronoun reversal to, quote, theory of mind narratives, we show that language can develop atypically, but not necessarily aberrantly. I've also used my training in language to challenge the use of language about autistic people. For example, in the use of person-first language in scholarly writing may accentuate stigma. I analyzed the texts of more than 5 million books, 25 million abstracts, and 150 million scholarly articles to demonstrate that scholarly writing uses person-first language more often for children with than without disabilities, more often for children with disabilities than adults with disabilities, and most often for the children with the most stigmatized disabilities. For example, the scholarly literature is much more likely to use the term gifted children with autism than the term autistic children with giftedness. In special needs is an ineffective euphemism. We demonstrated that children and adults described as having special needs rather than described as having a disability or having a specific disability such as autism or ADHD were rated significantly less positively. Therefore, the euphemism was actually working as a dysphemism. In more shared responsibility, for more appropriate communication, which was published in Ashes Perspectives, I examined 100 scholarly articles to demonstrate that researchers, parents, and clinicians frequently place the burden of, quote, more appropriate communication, end quote, on disabled children rather than sharing the responsibility. In other words, researchers, clinicians, and some parents often forget that reciprocity is a two-way street, and therefore the responsibility for more appropriate communication must be shared. That's the general nature of communication. In another article, my collaborators and I answered the question, do puzzle pieces and autism puzzle piece logos evoke negative associations? And the answer we empirically found is yes. We concluded that if an organization's intention is to evoke positive associations to autism, then the organization probably should avoid using puzzle piece imagery. In infantilizing autism, we analyzed autism societies and autism charities definitions of autism to demonstrate that they frequently refer to only autistic children at the expense of ignoring or infantilizing autistic adults. In this forum about mirror neurons, which you might remember, they were very hot about 15 years ago, I reviewed scores of studies to conclude that the evidence that autistic people lack or have broken mirror neurons is simply not viable. And more recently, Melanie Yergo and I conducted an exhaustive analysis of the claim that autistic people lack a theory of mind. And we concluded that the claim is empirically questionable and societally harmful. 